Aggie, how are you, man? Good, man. Yourself? Good, good. Welcome yeah. to the show. Uh, hounded. Nice. We're gonna try yeah. and keep the coon hound around. Whatever, dude. Aggie, <laughs> welcome to the show. How are you, man? Good, man. How are you? Good, good yeah. things. So yeah, Hounded, we're gonna ask you some questions about a little bit about your life. Hopefully find out some things we did not know. Play a game of Neglin with oh, a man. swing in between each question. Yeah. So yeah, let's get started. What's the best thing about being Canadian? Oh, all of it, really. I mean, there's really not much to complain, especially being in BC. Traveling, I think, like especially, you know, if you got a Canadian patch on your bag or something, you just seem to be seem to be really taken care of no matter where you go and people seem stoked on that. Yeah, I don't know, being Canadian is pretty good. Just all around. It's not bad, no, can't complain. No complaints. Eh? Yeah. Excellent. Well, you wanna take a swing? Yeah, Anyone? that was one. Okay, yeah. yeah. Adjust my technique here. Oh, motherfucker. Ooh, you played sitting down before. All right, so you grew up in Kamloops, BC, yeah. riding the Kamloops Bike Ranch. Yeah. What was that like? How did that shape you and your riding? Um. Completely. I mean, I lived, I well, my parents live right above the bike park. And before the bike park was even there, we had dirt jumps down there and there was quite the scene. And I was racing BMX when I was seven to 17. I didn't get into mountain bikes till I was about that age, 17 there. I mean, living right above the place and seeing the bike park grow from the beginning to what it is now. I mean, having that at my back door was definitely quite nice and definitely shaped who I am today. And you know, everyone who builds in there and does hard work like Brad, um, you know, Brad's definitely shaped the rider who I am today for sure. Another one? Oh yeah. Okay, you're gonna <laughs> run. Ready? Ready? One, two. Connection. Got it. All right. Connection. And so you're big into fishing and hunting. What, um, any other sports that you're into really? Um, yeah, snowboarding, sledding, and just got into the snow bike thing and pretty amped on those and too many hobbies, really. Yeah. But yeah, definitely I do a lot of things other than biking and it's hard to make time for all of it. But um, yeah, I mean, living where I do in Calms, we're just kind of surrounded by some of the best fishing and hunting terrain and, you know, close to all the mountains and stuff. Revelstoke's only two hours away or Lopa Hill Sun Peak is only 40 minutes away. And so, yeah, we like our winners for sure. We had a good winter this year and yeah. Being a professional mountain biker, what role do you, does having those other sports play in your life? It's huge for sure. I think um, like for me going into an event like Rampage, for example, um, I'm more familiar with kind of a mountain terrain environment, I think. Just being around it with snowboarding and sledding, I feel like I can read terrain a little differently. So I, when I go into an event like Rampage, I feel like I have a slight advantage, especially when it's a fresh blank canvas. I can kind of see things maybe differently than however few people see it. And I think that kind of comes across in my riding style, or I like to try it to at least kind of show that in my riding style a little bit, but. Cool, yeah. yeah. I feel like that'd be a huge advantage. For sure, yeah. I, it helps, I think, a lot, just being kind of in the mountains a lot and seeing how things kind of funnel out and work and yeah, yeah. helps for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, man, another swing. Yeah. yeah. I'm a horrible yeah. Neglin player. I struggle. It takes me like a good week at Retalic to, to warm get up back. and yeah. get your game on. Yeah. Uh, I heard you have a bitch in El Camino. Tell us about it. I had a bitch in El Camino. Ooh. Yeah, so actually, right before, well, three days ago, I just sold it to Roy Bushfield. Oh, okay. Bushy Wayne and, and Young Dex now on the El Camino. Oh. Yeah, but yeah. He has an insane fleet of vehicles now then. He does, and you know what, I'm having huge seller's remorse. Really? Yeah, I. he called me, he had a couple beers in him, I had a couple beers in me, and I was like, yeah, I'll sell the El Camino. He was like, well, would you take 1420? I'm like, well, yeah, I'll take 1420 for it. And So he came and picked it up before it came down here, and uh, I was a little sad to see it go. What about that car? Why did you love it? Why did you have it? It is what it is, you know, it was just a sick rig. It was super practical. You know, I took it fishing all the time, put the motos in it all the time, put my sledding even in it one time. And so it's going to a place where it's gonna be, you know, appreciated as much as I did. So Excellent. yeah, that's all that I'll matters, see it around. Really, bottom yeah, line. Yeah. yeah. Taking another hit. Oh my God. <laughs> nope. 
So you're on your way to Black Sage right now. Yeah. Tell us about the Fest series. On route to Black Sage. This will be the second year of, of that event. I was just down there a couple weeks ago and course is looking good and Fest, Fest has been going great. It's super loose. You know, it's something that we needed and we need in the sport right now. And a couple years ago when we first started it, it was uh, the free ride kind of scene was really hurting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's just no traction really besides Rampage, you know, and for Rampage being such a big event, you know, we're not selling bikes because of it or anything, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but you know, there's something that just a void that wasn't being filled and it's what we want to be doing and you know it's not a contest just a jam just the boys getting together and riding our big bikes and just riding really big jumps and you know putting on a show for the public which is great and um yeah it's just been gaining traction and it's super loose and unorganized unfortunately but just a lot of cooks in the kitchen and yeah, yeah just the way it goes but we're having fun and just keeping it core do you think there's been kind of a resurgence in the scene since you guys big time have been gaining momentum? Yeah, big time. I mean, you got like riders like Ethan Nell, you know, like who wasn't a slope style kid, wasn't really, you know, no one knew of him, right? And then now he's coming to these fest events, you know, he's on YT now. We just picked him up with Monster. Cool. You know, we have this kind of resurgence of all these young kids that are seeing the same vision that we have, but just never had a place to kind of show what they were capable of, I guess. I mean, it's great that we've kind of provided this platform for this new generation of kids to, you know, continue on the, the 26 for life, free ride <laughs> life, and it's it's great. Um, it's a great thing to be a part of, and I'm stoked that it's, it's going the way it's going so far, even for it being super loose, and mm -hmm. it's just great. It's great to see, yeah, the kids coming up and getting into it not thinking that they have to like get into slope style or dh or yeah. enduro or whatever they have something else that you know maybe it suits them versus something else okay. let's talk injuries you know uh, it's a part of the sport that it's it happens yeah you know you were just telling us your your thumbs you got some injuries there mm -hmm. you've had some serious injuries in the in, in the past What's been your mentality through everything? What's been keeping you going? It's really hard for sure. Yeah, it happens, shit happens, and mm -hmm. what do you do, right? But it's really all about how you deal with it mentally and, and off the bike. And I've always come back more appreciative for my, what I have. And, you know, it, it definitely adds fuel to the fire to come back stronger and better than before. And I mean, it's not gonna deter me from continuing to do what I wanna do. and. Obviously, I'm just stoked to be where I'm at right now. It's really a dream come true, and I'm not gonna let an injury scare me from that. But I mean, yeah, just use it as fuel and motivator to, to get back out there and continue doing it. And I have a really great fan base, and the me all the messages I receive and from, from everyone, it really like, it's like, oh yeah, it's like these people, are, you know, believe in me and are behind me and, you know, wanna see me back out there. So it's, it's really like, it's not just me, but having the whole community kind of support you is mm -hmm. is huge. And um, yeah, I'm lucky to have a good community behind me that's supportive and that's definitely a huge, huge thing to have. Absolutely. I can get more comfy there. Uh, oh little yeah. Little oh my God. Good talk. What's your favorite video part that you've ever put out? My standout segments for me. I think was probably strength in numbers. At that time, I was just getting out of slope style and I was really focusing on the big mountain thing. And I think that would probably be, for me, my standout. But hard to say. I think the standout ones are yet to come, so. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Wait and to I see don't... what the future has. Yeah, New World was really great. I mean, like, I grew up watching the New World stuff. They'd come to camps every year and film, and I was the Grom that was, like, helping them lug camera gear around and, mm -hmm. like, pushing the dude's bikes up the hills for them. And, yeah, so for me, being able to shoot my own segment was with them was was pretty monumental moment for me. And how about um, a favorite video part of someone else's, or Ooh. even you know section that you really thought, whether it was growing up or something you've seen recently that you thought was really innovative and inspiring? Yeah. So growing up in Kamloops, um, I immediately aspired to Matt Hunter. Um, I was lucky enough to have him 
take me riding when I was younger, back when I was just, you know, this grom on a hardtail. Just, you know, I, I can't believe even today, like he would even take me to go ride Harper and stuff like that. And yeah, watching that guy and Thomas too. And um, when they went to Morocco with Chandra, like that was a really yeah. cool one, really cool trip. And I still remember like the opening scene of them on the back of like the Land Cruisers, just like yeah. going out to the zone. It's like, oh, like, I want to do that so bad one day. Cool. Yeah, it's like, and that really kind of picked up like a surf culture vibe with that, and mm. it kind of seemed different from the normal, the normal bike stuff. And I think that's what really attracted to me was just more of a, a different art piece in a sense, not just like a bike porn thing. And yeah, I like that stuff a lot. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. they do good stuff. All right. Yeah. yeah. You're up. All right. I'm gonna get him on here. He down. <laughs> Think about it too much. You got it. Finally, oh, yeah. Dude. Six hits later. Who's the most famous person you've ever met? So, what is his name? Uh, Vanilla Ice. Met Vanilla Ice at Toronto <laughs> Supercross one year. Sick. And he did a freestyle rap for us and it was the most awful thing <laughs> ever. It was so bad. I don't know what he was thinking, but met that guy. So he's kind of famous, but I don't know if you're familiar with like Diener from Fubar. No. 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 Oh really? Might just be me. You've never yeah. seen Fubar? No. What? <laughs> no way. Okay. Well, first thing you're doing okay. tonight: watch Fubar All one right. and two, front to back. All right. There would be a moon here, a large rocket. It'd be all dark space, punctuated by planets. I would have a close-up, like of a lady on a cliff and she would have like a giant fucking laser gun and she would sort of just be protecting. It's Canadian comedy, it's like Canadians being in front of Canadians. Oh, that's like why the I haven't most, seen it. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's big. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but here. I'm not fooling anybody. I'm a fucking wicked bass player, but I'm not, I ain't no fucking Mozarty. Mozarty. He's a fucking Italian. He's like the greatest Italian no, classical I, I, fucking no, pianist I, I ever. I fucking know Mozarty. Mozarty fucking invented the piano. Was he? Did he live up to all your expectations when you met him? Oh yeah, yeah, big time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he gave her so hard. So he hosted this after party for Monster at Toronto Supercross, and he's he's not not DJ iPod. He's got he's got this big binder of all these CDs, and he's just playing different CDs, and it's like, oh, this song from this band, and oh, he's running around and just shotgunning with everyone, and <laughs> it was just yeah, such a savage scene and. Good dude, for sure. You guys got any more of these? Oh yeah, <laughs> we can make that happen. We got a fridge full. We got a fridge full? Louis, you want a beer? Show up. Oh, yeah. The old Tim Burrow. What's your go-to trail snack? Trail snack. When you're riding? <sighs> smoked oysters. Really? Mm-hmm. You bust out a can of smoked oysters, and some people aren't into smoked oysters, but you bust out a can of smoked oysters in the right crowd. And you're the champ. Yeah, yeah, you're the man. And they're so good for you. There's so many good oils in yeah. there. Yeah. That's like my little secret fuel. And you pull it out and like people are surprised. They're not expecting you to pull out a tin of oysters. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have you had one explode in your pack? No. That would be bad. But I've forgotten about the tin in my bag <laughs> and like gone to like get my winter bag yeah. out like the following winter. And it's like, oh, what is that smell? You know? Like, <laughs> Who inspires you in life or in mountain biking or in any realm these days? So many people inspire me from different cultures and different things. Um, first person that came to mind was, was Roy Bushfield. If you know him, then, then you know, mm -hmm. you know, and then um, Hunter and Thomas, just complete legends in my eyes. And I love what they're doing in the sport and, you know, Rob Machado surfing, like, um, I don't know if you've ever seen The Drifter. Mm -hmm. But a Taylor Steele film, um, that that movie I watched like religiously, and it's funny like I just got to stay with with Paris, and he lives with Eric Jackson, and that's like someone that I've looked up to, like the Jackson brothers for a yeah. long time, because they're super into fishing too. So I got to meet him yesterday, and I was pretty pumped. I tried cool. so hard not to fan out, and <laughs> hopefully I didn't embarrass myself. But <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm just so lucky that I've got to like meet so many of my heroes over the years, and. Mm -hmm. That's the dream. When I see these guys doing it, it's like, oh yeah, like just something to inspire to and look forward to. And totally. Yeah, yeah. It can be done. Can, can be do done. Yeah, yeah. Do no matter all the hardships and whatever. I mean, all those guys have had 
you know, crazy life experiences and um, and just, and how they've, you know, chosen to move forward. And yeah, just something to inspire to. And yeah, yeah. Right on. Oh, I nicked her. Uh, Oof. Kind of a, is there anything you do specifically that you found to stay at the top of your game? It's hard because some people, you know, they, they like the endless summer when they, they ride all season long. And, and now and now our season is almost year round. And for me, my winters are, are very important to me. Um, having that break and the decompression and just finding something different to kind of set my creativity into and just getting into the snow bike thing. And so I'm just finding a lot of inspiration in that and it's helping me with my riding for the mm -hmm. future and, and moving forward. And, you know, the club put out a video on the snow bike. It's like, oh, it's rampage training every day. And I'm like, oh, whatever, dude. And then I got one, I'm like, oh, he's absolutely right. Like, it's like riding Utah all yeah. day, every day. So it's like, I mean, in the winter, I can just be sending huge stuff and, and I fall in snow. Yeah. And it's pretty chill, you know, it's not dirt. So totally. like, for me, I mean, like moto is just such a good cross crossover sport and mm -hmm. good trainer. And so for me, like if I can go out there and just send huge stuff on, on the snow all day long with handlebars, mm -hmm. it's, it's the exact same feeling, yeah. you know, and, and snowboarding, I mean, ah, just carving, like nothing is better than carving, having like pow shots and just the feeling of soul shredding is just what you dream about on the bike every day. And that's why I really like riding the more big mountain scree stuff, even though it's a lot harder and less accessible to, to everyone. But when you find the right scree slope and you get those like couple carves in, there's just really no other feeling than that. And I just really strive for that feeling. Rampage is definitely something where it's like a different feeling. It's a little gnarlier, kind of mm -hmm. puts you in a place where you're not as comfortable in, but you just have to do it because you're there and you're psyched and the camera's rolling and the bird's in the air. But yeah. when you're soul shredding, you know, with your homies or whatever solo, getting those turns is just, when you know, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I look forward to. There's so many different things that we can pull from these from these different sports and emulate in our biking. And I think that's the greatest thing with mountain biking is it's, we're still finding what mountain biking really is and like what we can really do on the bikes. and. Yeah, a lot of inspiration, I think, from a lot of people comes from other sports like that. All right. Having fun's the most you. important thing. That's the truth. Oh, Whoa, getting, buddy. Getting weird. Awesome. Graham, thanks, man. That was kind of all the questions I had. Appreciate is, it. Is there anything you want to leave our viewers with or any, any last words you want to impart? Uh, yeah, I, mean, I say this all the time, but just have fun. Yeah, man, I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. And yeah, if you're having fun, you're doing the right thing. If you're not, then you need to reevaluate what you're doing. But. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, Absolutely. cheers. Live the good life. Live the good life. All right, yeah, let's finish this game. All right. Yeah. Is it my Figure go? in the bottom. Yeah. I'm gonna freaking one and done this. I reckon the guy right here, right here. 